just a kid from North Miami. I like to live my life, enjoy the people in my surroundings, the people around me, and I like to catch a vibe. Whew. Back to where I grew up at, man. This is where it all started. This is the house I was raised in right here. I think we moved in this house probably like, what was it? I was four years old or three years old, 1994. Yeah, we've been in this house for, for, for a long time. We, I ended up selling it last year. But this is where I grew up, man. There's a lot of memories in this house. My dad, my mom, my brothers. This is where, where everything started at, man, right here. I remember we used to do like paintball shoots, shootouts. We used to do paintball shootouts like every like every October. Like we used to go against like different areas, like different blocks, different, you know, like two blocks down, we'll go against them boys over there, we'll go against them boys over there. Like it used to be like, it used to be crazy. They used to do drive-by shootings with the paintballs and stuff like that. That's how, that's what we used to do back in the day, man. Just to have fun, you know, be positive, you know, and just, you know, do, you know, just have fun with it. But, you know, as we grew up, this, this is, as we grew up, shit got real. Start having real shootouts. There's two things that y'all gotta really understand and really like break down, like really dissect where we're from. We're from a place where there's really no opportunity. There's no really, no like big homie or big brother that really can like, you know what I mean? There's always just like what the street got going on and what you ear hustle and what you figure out and you see what you see because what your environment is and you know. Cause there used to be older niggas than like older niggas and we was like the generation that was in the middle and then we had them younger cats. So the older cats, I guess one of them dudes owed somebody. And this is the block right here. We used to chill right here under this, um, where the church is at. We used to chill under here. People would come out here, they smoke and do that shit. You know, they chill and do all that, all that right there. So that's where everybody used to hang out. I think they probably still hang out there to, to this day. It was always just lessons. And it was just like, okay, you're learning, I'm learning. We out here, I'm out here, you feel me? And you know, it was always just cool. You know what I mean? It's always like good vibes, like. Yeah, man, he's just like, he's a phenomenal person. And um, anybody he encounters, he always uplifts them, bring positivity. And um, if I'm dying, I, need, I still, you know how, um, what's that thing called? That game, Double Jeopardy or something? Not Jeopardy, but when you got like a lifeline, like, who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, who wants to be a millionaire? So I know I ain't, I ain't use no lifelines with him yet. You feel me? So I know I got like one or two in the cut. You dig? He's at this point in his life where like, he's just trying to plan everything out to execute. It's a lot of more stories, but this is the main area where everything went down, bro. This is where everything, where I grew up, Money was made. I remember when this church was abandoned, we used to go in there. I remember when Eva had came one time to the block. <coughs> this was way before um, we started talking. And that's where we kind of like in the little, the beginning stages of like just playing around and shit. She was to come over here and like, yeah. She told my, uh, my other homeboy that she liked me. And my homeboy came up to me. He's like, yo, that black girl like you, dog. You know what Go, go do, go, go, you know what I'm saying? Go do that. Go do that. No, no, don't be scared. Go do that. Da, da, da. You know, back then, our mindset was just, you know, you know how guys yeah. think back in the days, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not knowing that she'll be my, you know, my fiance and soon to be wife, so. Like growing up in my day, it was pretty fun. Um, to be honest, you know, we was outside. I used to ride bikes, so play around with my friends, play football, basketball on the streets. Um, steal bikes, go through alleyways, looking for bike parts and stuff like that. You know, things kids used to do back in the day. 
you know, not sitting in front of a game system all day. My mom had three kids. Um, my older brother stays in Orlando. Uh, me and Jim, me and Jimmy, we were both um, like raised in the same household. Uh, my older brother, um, Junior, he also lived with us for a while. How close were you to your father? I was real close to my father. Um, he was good. The only thing I can say is that, you know, back then he he didn't really have that much time for us. Um, always working, always working. So when he come home from work, it's basically like yeah, he have like two three hours to chill, enjoy himself, and enjoy the family for a little bit, and then he has to go to sleep and get ready for the next day. He always was hustling, working. You know what I mean? I commend them from, for coming down here because they took a risk from Haiti, getting on a boat, risking their life to come over here for a better life. So yeah, they went through a lot to get here. That's a crazy question. I never really, nobody asked me that question before when I have to really like, it's like, I don't know, like, Billy's like one of the friends that I have that's from, like, elementary to now. We don't really have too many friends like that, so it's not even like friends anymore, it's like brotherhood. Like, we went through different stages together in our life. So it's like, we just, it's like a brotherhood. Him, his other brother, his whole family, you feel me? We grew up with each other, so it's like brothers. So right now we on our way to Granny Elementary. That's the elementary school I went to. There's a lot of memories there too. Uh, school, I was terrible. I was a terrible kid. <laughs> I was terrible. I didn't want to listen to nobody. I thought I knew everything. I was a bully. Just not listening to the teachers, doing what I wanted to, walking out of class. Even in elementary, I was walking out of class. Well, back then, um, when I used to go to the school, I felt like the teachers and like, they didn't really care. They was not really teaching us the way. And I think the big reason for that is probably because they're not getting paid enough. You know what I mean? So. Why do you feel like you were so rebellious in school? I don't know. I probably was say maybe because I was spoiled as a kid, maybe. Um, probably that. And, and like describe spoiled. Uh, I don't say I got everything. Like I asked my mom, hey, I need this, and she'll give it to me. It's just I just felt like you know maybe I was the favorite kid, maybe uh, something like that. <laughs> maybe. How, how do you think your brother would feel about you saying that you were the favorite? Um. I don't know. I don't think they'll feel any type of way because my, my parents used to say it. <laughs> my parents used to say it. So, um, it is what it is. There was never nobody there like, yo, sit down with me and be like, yo, here, this is what you need to do. Like, I had trouble reading when I was growing up. I had, you know, math, I was always good at math, but reading, I always had an issue with reading. My kids are not really going through what I went through. And you know, that was one of my goals I always wanted because I always, I didn't want my kid to go to the same elementary school, middle school, high school that I went to. I wanted to make sure they was out of that environment. It just, it's just a difference. Like where I stay at now in the school system that's like, the system that's over there now, you can see like the difference. The teachers care, they call you. These teachers over here is not calling you. Unless you get in trouble or you get in something, so you, you did something wrong, you feel me? But where, where my son, where my son go to school at now, the teachers call you, they let you know he has homework, they let you know this is what needs to get done. They're, they're involved with the, with the children, you know what I'm saying? So that's like, the, that's one of the big issues I have with the um, school system, man. Like this area that I'm in right now, my kids, are on my, like my son goes to school and he's on point. Like the teachers are on point. They con they contact you. They do, you know, they have field trips here and there. Most a lot of times, um, I feel like they're they're just underpaid, so they don't really take their job serious. 
Granny actually went all the way up to sixth grade. So I know certain sixth grade starts in middle school, but over here we started sixth grade here. Then we transferred over to Thomas Jefferson um, Middle School where it went from seventh to ninth. So we had, it was kind of the system. I don't know if they changed it now, but that's how it was back then. But I'm gonna take you out of Thomas Jefferson. That's where things got a little crazy. That's when it started to turn up. You know what I mean? Let's go over there. I was just a bad kid overall. But I started like after sixth grade because I failed the sixth grade. Um, that was a moment for me because I realized like all my friends because from Gratney it went from um, I think from kindergarten to sixth grade and then from sixth grade you go to Thomas Jefferson to seven to ninth at the time. So when I see all my friends leaving, I'm like, damn, I gotta stay back with all these with all the like the younger cats. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn. It, it was like eye opener for me. How would I describe Billy B? Go get it. My hustles in middle school, um, I used to cut grass. Um, I used to work at Timashi. It's like a Haitian, like it, it's not Haitian, but it's like a, um, a flea market that they had at, at the time. Like everybody that's from Miami, they know what um, the open locker flea market was. So I used to work there. I used to get paid like on the weekends I, after I, like, on the weekends I'll go from like six to like seven at night, early in the morning to like seven at night, like 13 hour shifts for those two days. And I'll get paid a hundred dollars a day. And I'll be like $200 for the weekend. I'll be like, I'm good. Now I can, now I can buy some J's. Now I could buy some clothes so I could wear to school. Ever since I met him, it's like he always was grinding, always was doing something. You know, even like in middle school, he was selling chips. He had the chips bumping. You know, he was selling chips, juice. He get the hustle from his dad. But it's just like every day we go to school, he's always working hard. You know, we all go through our little like trials and tribulations, but he always never gave up. He always was like a go-getter in my eyes. So it's just like, you know, I would say like, yeah, go-getter. Well, I didn't really get too much fight because I was more of like the cool guy. Um, just getting money, just trying to, you know, stay up with the trends, like the shoes, the, the trends that, that was there at the time, trying to stay fly, basically. This is like one of my first ventures of making money. I used to sell chips and Capri Suns early in the morning. Like, them guys used to play um, football in the back where, where, where the new school is at. Back there, they used to play football and stuff, like basketball, football. I'm over here, like, making sure I got all my stuff packed in my book. I had, like, two, two book bags. Selling chips, Capri Suns, and stuff like that early in the morning. Yeah, stuff like that. One full with Capri Suns, one full with chips, and all type of chips in there. And, and then them boys, when they finish playing early in the morning, they ready for Capri Sun, they ready for chips. That's their breakfast. And I'm like, yo, I got them, you got them. Boom, boom, making a profit. You know what I'm saying? Man, that, that was like my first ventures of um, being a hustler, man. Started all right here, Thomas Jefferson, man. There's a lot of stuff that went down, bro. A lot of stuff. This is when I like this school. I ain't go much cap. I, I ain't go much cap. This this school right here is when I actually enjoyed being in school because so much shit went on. It was just fun. Like the whole time, it was just fun. With the girls, um, I didn't really take the girls serious. We gotta do something, bro. And I said, you know what? And we sitting there, and then we seen the 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 girl that do the morning announcements walking out the front gate, and she walking out right here, and it just clicked to, uh, in both of our heads. We was like, oh shit. So what happened was, well, I said, yo, I got you. I forgot, to, I said, I'll give you $5 or whatever if you do this for me. We told her exactly what to do. So, so the morning announcements came on. Mind you, that time, that's when Beyonce to the left song was on fire. Like, was on fire. So she did the morning announcements, da da da, she did it, and then she hung up the phone. So we like, damn, she didn't do it. And then she picked up the phone again. Uh, she picked up the phone again. She said, oh yeah, we have one more further announcement. She said the girl name, I ain't gonna say her name. She said the girl name, Billy said to the left, to the left. The whole school heard it. <laughs> the whole school heard it, bro. That shit was crazy. Yo, 
I ain't gonna much lie. And what made it worse, she was not even at school yet. She came late that day. She came late that day. So when the bell rang, first period um, bell rang, and we're all in the hallway, everybody looking at me like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm a champ. Yeah, I'm walking through that shit like, yeah, I did that. You feel me? Like, I'm walking through that bit like I did that, bro. Yo, that shit was crazy. So that's when she finally came. Uh, we in the hallway. Everybody running to her like, yo, you heard what Billy did to you? You heard what Billy did? He broke up with you over the announcement. Teachers telling me why I did that. Like, yo, everybody heard it. So, so she, she was in the hallway and she was like, da -da -da -da, and she slapped me. Bitch! <laughs> she slapped, I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, but I'm a G. I still did what I did, you feel me? That slap, yeah, I deserve the slap, but at the end of the day, I got the last laugh, you feel me? That was an epic, epic breakup, you know what I mean? To this day, it's like, I should have got an award for that, you know what I mean? But I'm sorry to my ex, yeah. But yeah, it is what it is. It was, it was it's just memories, it's just memories. Good times, we have fun. You know, looking back at it, it was just like, we was just playing around and stuff, but it made the news. First day in high school was I went to Hank City. I actually moved to Pontiana with my cousin and I did a year up there. So when I got to Hank City, it was different. You know what I mean? Like the girls was different, the guys was different. It was like little short guys lifting like three three plates. I'm like, what the heck is they feeding these niggas down here? Like, yo, these it, it was crazy. The guys was like, I'm looking at them like, they putting something in their in they water up here it, it was different then when i came back to north miami i already knew kind of knew because i grew up um grew up here was raised in um in north miami so i, I already knew what to expect you know the east side west side stuff because we've been going through that stuff so when i got there i guess like the people on the east side probably was like who is this new guy then he's already popular like everybody already knew him because i was already known you know what i mean but to them there's like I'm new to the school, but who is this guy? So that's how I snatch Eva. Yeah, but now I'm gonna take y'all to North Miami Senior High. You know what I'm saying? Where I met Eva. You know what I mean? It's going down. Let's go up. Let's go up, baby. The first thing I said to Eva, um, I think we was walking in the hallway. And I, I, th I probably said, why are you not in class? I think that was probably one of the first thing I said. You know what I'm saying? I see this nice, beautiful chocolate woman walking down, like, yeah, let me see what she up to. You know what I mean? 